Vicki, also known as Dragonfly7673. And today is January 14th. It's just after 6 o'clock and we're ready to go. Um, this week has been interesting. <laughs> I started thinking back and realized that actually a lot of things happened this week. Um, I had my five-year anniversary at work and in my department and like my section of the organization, they try and really celebrate uh, the major milestones, the 5, 10, 15 years. Um, not every department in our company does that, unfortunately, but on our side, they try and make a big deal of it. They, um, we had cake, so we had red velvet cake, which I'll show a picture of. Um, I got my picture taken with my manager. Um, my ex-manager, who I adore, couldn't make it because the flu got him. And uh, But he sent a really nice message to be read aloud in his place. And then he made a point of calling me after he knew the celebration was over. So that was really nice. Um, and then my current manager put together a slideshow with a poem she wrote and she was kind of funny because she was they were picking on me a little bit like you know if you need help you know make sure you bring me coffee and Reese's peanut butter cups and you know I'll make your problems go away type thing which <laughs> there are a lot of people who know I love Reese's peanut butter cups and they will send them um like as a thank you or somebody will call up and say I've got a really big problem would you like some coffee so um, it is kind of one of those things, but I was really proud of her. She, I manage a group of programmers and she managed to combine knitting with programming and say that, um, we managed to cast on our programs well and w so that there is very little frogging, <laughs> which I thought was pretty clever of her for not being a knitter. So, <laughs> um, Anyway, so I will show you real quick the picture, the couple pictures from that. So, um, then later in the week, now last week you guys know I was still sick. And to be honest, there I was still having a lot of trouble talking. I was coughing. Thursday I was supposed to teach a class at work and I ended up asking um, one of the guys that works for me uh, to please do it in my place. I'd be sitting there and I'd answer questions but I'm like I just cannot talk that long. Um, and luckily it was to just a couple people so it was okay and he did a great job. Um, there's a chance that the camera might rock because the fact that the kitties keep wandering around wanting attention. Um, and that was Thursday, and then Friday, I worked from my parents' house. So Thursday, I went to work. Hi, Tiggy. You have to say hello if you're going to come here. Yes, you better say hi. He comes up because he wants cuddles, and then he doesn't really want my kind of cuddles. He likes cuddles on his terms. Um... Friday, I went to my parents' house. Um, I did not take the cats this time, which is part of the reason they're being extra lovely, because I left them alone. Uh, best friend came and checked on them and spent a whole lot of time with them and gave them lovey, so it wasn't like they were all by themselves. But I um, met with my son's teacher, who said that he was doing a good job. Um, and then this is his IEP champion. It's not like he just has one teacher. It's just the most important one in our world. Um, and then Saturday we went to see The Hobbit. I had planned on knitting on the twitchy socks during The Hobbit, but the theater we went to, the seats were really close together, and the woman sitting next to me and I felt like we were kind of on top of each other, and I just didn't want to add to that by knitting. I mean, normally I have no problem, but um, I'm used to the bigger... Marcus theaters that are here in the Milwaukee area 
and they have wider seats and you got a little more space. This was an older Marcus Theater and it's perfectly fine, but they're a little snug. <laughs> so I didn't end up knitting and that was like three hours I was planning on knitting on those socks. Um, I do have them to show you because I have actually worked on them and it's been a while since you've seen them. Really? I need your butt. Down. <laughs> um, so, since I did start feeling better, I did get to work on some things. So, let's just go into that. First of all, before I left, I blocked the Everlasting Love Shawl, which is why this is called Everlasting. Um, I'm going to post pictures here. When I blocked it, I posted on my Ravelry page a um, picture of it blocking, and a couple people commented on it, and one person commented, and I didn't get a chance to answer her right away, but I was thinking her name looked familiar. All of a sudden later, it dawned on me that her name looked familiar because she was the designer, and I've been putting her name in the show notes for weeks, well, weeks, months. And months. I've been working on this since May. So, <laughs> um, so she actually asked if she could use one of my pictures on the main page, um, and she actually she I took pictures of it finished that I will put here. So those are the pictures I put on my project page. She actually, she took the one that was just the full shot, and I was, I was surprised. I thought some of the other ones were prettier, but whatever. Um, one thing I thought was really cool that I didn't notice until I blocked this. The lotus flower actually has, it folds in right here, just like a real lotus flower would. Um, it has kind of this little cup. And all of the, the all of the lotus flowers did that, so it wasn't just like I screwed up. Which, <laughs> but this thing is beautiful. It's pretty big. I probably could have blocked it even bigger, but um, the most I could do with my blocking mats um, was four by four, so four feet by four feet. So that's. It's probably about four feet on the diameter, maybe a little bigger because I actually blocked, I pinned it over into the carpet. But so I am really happy this is done. I think it's really pretty. Um, it's one of mom's favorites. So I have not decided which shawl I'm going to do next because I seem to almost always have a shawl in progress. Um, I mean, I'm doing the malice, but I mean, for my next big lace shawl, I haven't decided yet. So that is finished, blocked, done. Speaking of the malice, um, I have not taken a new picture of this. I'm planning on taking pictures whenever I finish a clue, and I'm not done with clue three yet. But from right here where the transition from the green to the purple, that's everything above that was done in the past week. Um, most of it done at my parents' house in the evenings, some of it yesterday. So it's now over 400 stitches and I don't like purling back 400 stitches. And it's not, <coughs> it used to be that purling hurt my hand and I've moved, I've changed the way I'm holding it so it doesn't hurt my hand as much anymore. But it doesn't go fast and I just get frustrated because I feel like it takes forever to go all the way across the row. Um, and it's going to keep increasing. It just had, if you look, there's a row here of eyelets. Um, on the two edges, uh, for about 30 stitches, it was knit one, make one. Uh, she has you do make one so that they make a hole. So it was knit one, make one uh, for 30 stitches on the edges. And then um, the whole middle section was actually knit two make one so it's about every third increase but 
it was a lot. <laughs> um, and I know it will increase more. Luckily in Clue 4 I looked and it only increases on the edges. But I think in Clue 5 there's another big increase, but I'm not sure. But considering that how much yarn is used in this, I know there's some more big increases. So um, that's coming along. It actually, once I got past the wonky chart, and like I said, chart two was weird and it had you moving the stitch markers all the time, and I redid it so that you didn't have to move the stitch markers. Um, and then it turned out to be really easy. It's actually not a complicated pattern. It's just a lot of knitting. So it's actually been good for, um, it's been better for TV knitting than I thought it would be. So I told you I'd show you the twitchy socks. Um, the last time you saw it, this pink stripe was done. And over the last couple weeks, just like randomly knitting on a doctor's office, waiting for my computer to boot up, conference calls a little bit. Um, I finished this pink stripe and it's just about to turn blue so it's the pink stripe is done. So eh, I got about that much done since the last time you saw it. It's got a ways to go. Like I said I thought I would take it to the movies. It, I took it to the movies I just didn't work on it at the movies. So um, I have the other thing I've been doing is spinning. I told you I was going to be working on my Gales Art Alpaca Silk. This is it. Um, and I will post a picture here. So, this is for our January Garnet Birthstone Along. Um, this month I am spinning my red. You can spin, knit, crochet, um, anything fiber related. So this is, uh, and it's coming out pretty thin for me. Which it's actually taking a lot longer. Um, I did an ounce, took me about three hours to do. So this is two ounces, um, but both times I did a, I did an ounce, and then I, last night I did another ounce, and both times it was about three hours. Um, one thing is this alpaca silk is very sheddy, um, and it keeps getting all over my pants. And then I remembered I have this pillowcase that I really like. A friend of mine made it for me, um, but I don't really use it because it doesn't go with the quilt on my bed but it is absolutely perfect for putting across my lap while I'm spinning so it is now permanently with the spinning wheel and now it is getting use and I get to see it every day because um, I really do like it, it just, just didn't match what I was so so I'm really glad to have found a use for that, and it keeps my pants from being full of fuzz. It's bad enough I have cat hair all over, much less getting full of red fiber fuzz. Um, for the birthstone along, I told you there would be a prize, but I didn't hadn't pulled it out yet. So, for January, um, this is Plymouth Yarn Happy Feet, 90% uh, superwash merino, 10% nylon. These are 50 gram skeins. So there's two, so you can make two pair, two socks, one pair. Um, this will be for January's garnet. Um, assuming you're not sick of knitting red. <laughs> um, I also pulled February's. February is the purple amethyst. Um, this is this is from Lotus Yarn. It's actually a deep stash dive. It was one of the first things I ever bought. And I've just never used it. And it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful purple. Um, it is 80% uh, superwash merino, 20% nylon. It's called Blood Flowers. Um, Lotus Yarns is no longer uh, doing yarn. I believe she went back to school. Um, but anyway, uh, it is gorgeous. And it will be the February prize. 
Just figured I'd put it out there. Um, I started to pull some Volmice for the red. And honestly, I went, well, if I do January and give you Volmice, I'm really setting myself up for a very expensive year. So I decided to stash dive a little more and pull some things. Um, Allison, who had the brilliant idea to do the birthstone along, is donating either one or two skeins. Um, when we come to those months, I'm not sure if she was donating one or both. She, she had two of them, and I'm not sure if I was picking one or if she's donating both, and I need to clarify that with her. But either way, I'm very grateful. Um, so, and because she's in Australia, when we get to those months, she will ship direct to the person because that way it's, you know, it would really suck if she shipped it here and then I ended up shipping it back to Helena and, or something like that. So she's going to ship direct. Um, if anybody wants to donate something for one of the prizes for the birthstone log, you know, say you've got some really gorgeous blue yarn that you would like to, to give up for the Sapphire Month, you know, let me know. You know, send me a message on Ravelry. I'm not requiring it, obviously. I mean, I will find prizes. But if somebody wants to help and donate prizes, that's perfectly okay. So, I mean, and it can be yarn. It can be stitch markers, um, fiber, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, um, the other thing. I'm going to post pictures of these two real quick and say hello to Tigger again. Alright, so, now I showed you this last week. This is my snuggle blanket. Um, now, Helena Willow Fairy of Willow Fairy Knits, she made a red snuggle blanket. So she counted it as her garnet project and her snuggle project, which is perfectly okay. I mentioned last week that if I had, if I had waited and done this in February, I could have counted it as my, as a February amethyst project. Um, so, that is perfectly okay. You knit a red snuggle, you can do them in both. Now, other podcasts like Knitting on the Fly and uh, Highland Handmaid's uh, Fiberista Files, they have made a point of saying that you should only post in Sadie's group and their group and don't double dip anywhere else. Um... I said go ahead and double dip because we are so small that I'm not expecting us to win. So on Sadie's group, if you're dedicating a snuggle to, to Dragonfly Swords, make sure you specify that. But in ours, um, don't worry about it. But if you can tell me, you know, I knit this and I dedicated it to Dramatic Knits or something like that, you know, say that. I already said this in our main thread and I linked Sadie and she didn't object. So I, I'm not, we're small. Even if everybody knitted one, it, it, we'd be hard pressed. I mean, knittables is already like taking away, uh, <laughs> taking it by storm because there's a few people dedicating everything. But I do want to encourage you to knit snuggles because I think it's important. So today I got two prize packages put together. Well, I ordered them from Etsy. They're not here yet, but I'm gonna post pictures. There's a cat prize and a dog prize. All right, um, the dog prize is a project bag from Bag and Bags that has dogs on it, combined with stitch markers from Bead Passion that are little doggy related ones. They're, you know, dog bone, dog dishes. Then the cat prize, um, both items are from bead markers. I'm looking at my um, Etsy app so I can make sure. And there is the project bag, which is the drawstring cat bag, and then cat stitch markers. So, those would be two prizes. Um, 
when we draw the winners, I will probably talk to the winners and see if they have a preference over the dog or the cat. And it might just be that whoever answers first gets their first preference and the other person gets the other one. Hopefully it'll work out. <laughs> um, I happen to like dogs and cats, so to me it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so there, it, there are two prizes. So I will post pictures of those um, at the top of the thread. Oh, speaking of the top of the thread, I'm sorry to jump around. I got, I got Tiggy here. He has whopped the table with his tail. Last week I recited off all the different months and what kind of what the jewel is and what the uh, knitting color will be. Or not knitting, whatever, your fiber color. So I actually did get December and March backwards. March was aquamarine. That one should be the pale blue like a periwinkle. Um, Mom actually posed, uh, sent me a good picture. And then that I'll use when we get there. And December is turquoise. So it's your turquoise, your teal, your blue greens. Um, but what I did is at the top of the birthstone chatter thread, it lists all the months, the jewel that goes with them, and the colors we're expecting. And again, nobody's going to, like, you know, shame you if you... It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> so, you know, try and make it a dominant color. Some people doing the red have said, you know, they had a lot of red in their stash. They don't knit a lot of red. So they're, you know, they're using some of it up. Some people are uh, working on finishing some things that they've had lingering. And that's all this is for. You know, it's just to kind of have fun and... And, you know, have some guidance. I mean, that was how I finally picked, uh, decided to spin this particular uh, roving was because it fit perfectly for the garnet. So, all right. I do plan on knitting another snuggle blanket, which takes me to my patterns, which I've got, I will tell you guys something. I tend to collect patterns. And it doesn't always mean I'm going to knit them. Sometimes I just really want to understand the construction. And I think it's because I, I, I'm i a computer programmer at heart. And I like reading through code and deciphering it and figure out what it's, what it's supposed to do. Um, so I like reading patterns. Um, there was somebody I used to do tech, uh, I used to read over her patterns and just like and, and analyze them for technical issues. And I could actually like read through and figure out where stitch counts are wrong and thing like, things like that because in my brain, I sort of knit it in my head. So sometimes I collect patterns because, and I may never knit them. I just really want to read them and see how they work. Um, this one is a little bit of that. <laughs> this pattern is, norm, is $5.99. It is a t Tunisian crochet pattern but it is a spiral, um, and I wanted to know how they did that. And it's called the Simply Spiraled Entrelock. Um, it says the Hook Hounds, but I don't... I meant to write down the actual name, and I forgot. Um, I remember to write down the price. So it's spiraled, and you start in the center, and then you make corners, and, and I wanted to know how you pick up the edges and things like that. So, I am planning on my next blanket to be based off this one. So I'll probably start with, you know, they, they used a, a long color change yarn in this picture. But I'm just going to start with the purple and go probably till I run out of purple or I'm sick of purple and then do blue on the outside. But I figure that that will give me something interesting to do for the other snuggle. So that is from Hook Hound Simply Spiraled Entrelac. It's linked in the show notes already because I, I wrote them up earlier. The person's name on Ravelry is not Hook Hound, and I don't remember what it is right now. Um, other ones I got this week. Uh, Laura Ayler Designs. Uh, Laura, Laura had her birthday this weekend, this past weekend. I had never heard of her. Um, but she was putting out a coupon code for her birthday where you could get any free pattern or ebook um, 
with the coupon code. And so it was like going all over Plurk and Ravelry. Somebody posted it in the Ravelry group. And I chose this one called the Fabergé Shop. Um, it's normally $6, but I got it for free because of the coupon. Um, I really liked the stitch pattern here. Um, and there's a better picture of the finished shawl. If you guys ever notice, I look over here. I have a media case that's actually got yarn in it, but the glass reflects, and I can just see enough of myself to know whether or not I'm lining things up. So that's a picture of the finished shawl. And then she actually has uh, this page has like little swatches in different colors, which I just thought was kind of cool. Um, she does recommend that you swatch it so that you can practice the weird st uh, stitch and yeah, the stitch there and also um, get an idea of whether you really like the colors together. Um, I just thought it was really pretty. Um, this one I probably will make. I don't know when, but I really like it. So I picked that one up. Um, Heather of the Fiberista Files, that I mentioned earlier, uh, released her stargazing cowl. Um, Ashley, who is also Spun Too Tight of the Spinner's World podcast, test knit this. So did Steve of Dramatic Knits. So I saw it on both their podcasts even before it was released and liked it. Um, and then Heather showed it. And if you watch her podcast, you really should watch her podcast, especially when she's releasing patterns, because a lot of times she'll give you a free code if you watch. So this is the Stargazing Cowl. Um, it supposedly really stretches um, and grows when you block it. The It's normally $1.99, so even if you don't have the free code, it is not an expensive pattern. Um, she has how to knit a swatch, and the swatch is important because the entire thing is written like a worksheet. So you say, my gauge is so many stitches per inch. And then she has you go through and you fill out all the different parts of the worksheet and do the math. And then that way you can knit it for almost any weight of yarn, for however much yarn you have. Um, Ashley... Uh, of Spinner's Roll said it worked really well for her hand spun. She actually did not use anywhere near all her yarn. She used like half of it, but that was by design. Uh, but anyway, it just... I really like the look of it, so that one will be on the needles at some point. Now, the other day, you know, I have people write in the what are you working on thread. You know, different things that they're working on. I post in there when I'm spinning, or I posted when I blocked my shawl, and other people write about stuff they're working on, or even if they're working on maybe, you know, looking for a job. It's kind of our general chatter thread. Please go feel free. Join chatter. Um, but, um, oh, I want to say her name is Leona Thompson in real life. It's in the show notes. But her Ravelry idea is Spin on Lady. Um, S-P-I-N-U-N-L-A-D-Y. She published her first pattern. Um, it is the Dublin Cloche, which is this hat. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. There's another picture on the bottom. And it is... Yes, Leona Thompson. It's on here. Um... It is not a uh, it's not a difficult pattern. It is very clearly written. You know, like I said, I like to read through patterns. So it is made of uh, sport weight yarn. So of course it's got the cute button. So <coughs> I'm very proud of her. I mean, <coughs> I've periodically had the idea of. Um, doing a pattern. Just a second. I don't know if you guys heard the buzzing, but 
mom called uh, to talk to me about my son and his field trip today and some other stuff, so I had to answer. <laughs> he, he went on a field trip to Madison Media Institute, and he came back very excited. He talked my ear off, and then he talked her ear off. I have a Tiggies here who still wants attention. Um, so, I had a couple other things to show you. Um, one, you guys might remember from the episode with Tiff that we both got gift certificates for Signature Needle Arts. So I ordered the sock size. This is um, size 1, 2.25 millimeter. So this is, I mean, they're you know, tiny needles, but... I had the 4 inch length uh, tip and then the 32 inch total cable length. I have not used them yet. Um, the twitchy socks, I'm not going to change the needles at this point. It will mess up my gauge. So, what are you doing? So, that I got that. And then, quite a while ago, I ordered some things from Rain Lover um, Sarah. Of Rain Lover Knits. I had ordered those uh, Christmas tree pendant necklaces, one for me and one for Tiff. I And when I ordered those, I had said, those are a Christmas present. You know, if I could get those right away, great. I also ordered at the same time these tatted stitch markers. I have I'll try and find I'll try and get pictures or I'll just Actually, I'll probably just link you to her site. Um, they're tatted, so they're soft. And I got little ones. These are sock size. And then um, I think these are more medium size. So they are um, they are just little rings. We had an issue because I have ordered from Sarah many times. Um, I've either ordered from her or I've gotten de-stashed from her. I mean, I've... Seriously, I've never had a problem. I mean, I've, I've, I got a, a Namaste bag that I bought off of her, all sorts of things, jewelry, um, earrings. So, for whatever reason, this time, my package got lost. First, she accidentally had the wrong zip code, and it got returned to her. She mailed it out again, and it just disappeared into the ether. We have no idea where it went. So, she made me new stitch markers um, and they just came today and this time she, she put tracking on it but then I opened it up and she had put in a whole bunch of little goodies as a thank you for not being upset which she didn't have to do like I said I've, I've worked with Sarah so many times now it's I know it wasn't her um, but I'm still happy to have the stitch markers so here is a set of uh, 10 it looks like and these are the Tangle Free Loops. All of these are. Here's another set. Here's another set, black ones. And then this is a um, pendant. A little mini skein pendant. So, those are awesome. Sarah's awesome. She did not have to do that, but I'm not going to turn down free presents. So, <laughs> um... So those came today, and oh my god, I know, I'm like sitting here going, there's something else I need to tell you guys, and I keep meaning to tell you guys. So I believe I mentioned that I'm going to CJ Kopech's uh, knitting retreat in May, and that one's the, because she has the podcast, uh... oh I never get it right, it's GGPL, GGPL. Guts, Grits, and Pink Lipstick. Um, so her retreat is in May. And then I really wanted to go to Kagi's Knitting in the Mitten. Kagi is the um, host of the High Fiber podcast, which is an audio podcast that has been around forever. I think it's five years now. And she hosted Knitting in the Mitten. This past November was the second year. Um, if you watch Fiberista Files, Knittables, um, Knitting on the Fly, any of those, they all went to uh, Knitting in the Mitten. Um, 
so did Mary Gale of the Exchange Student in Fiberland. And a bunch of other people went there, of course, too, including a bunch of people that I really want to meet. And I was really, really hoping to get in this year. I mean, I actually put it on the calendar with an alarm to remind me to log in and do it. Well, I'm so glad I did because as soon as she said, okay, because what she did is she had anybody that had previously gone to Knit in the Mitten got first dibs on spots. And then she would open up to new people um, and she was going to open it up as of midnight on the, I don't even remember what day. I think it was the Friday before Christmas. But anyway, no, I don't remember. It doesn't matter anymore. I was the third person to sign up and apparently there were only four openings at the time. There is a waiting list now in case people can't go later. But I was really glad I got in. So um, Susan Pandorf, Kagi, I, I mean, these are all people that I've either met at Stitches and hung around with, um, really want to meet. I mean, I watch Katie and Heather, and they just look like people I would have fun hanging out with. I mean, I just, so including poor Katie when she, if you watched, and she actually busted a table. Um, at Knitting in the Mitten. Um, and she also had something where she was supposed to go make dinner and then when she got in there she realized she didn't actually know what to do. And they just sound like things that would happen to me. And I just, these are people I want to meet. And it turns out there's actually a lot of overlap in the people going to CJ Kopeck and Knitting in the Mitten. Um, which is kind of cool because I think that, you know, you'll meet people in one and then, then in November the other one will be like, hey, how you doing, you know. I'm really excited. I actually, though, I took my name out of SSK because I'm like, if I'm already going to these two retreats, um, the other reason that these two retreats made sense for me is because they are in Michigan. Both of them are a four to five hour drive away. Um, and that's not bad. I mean, that's easily doable. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it every day, but that's, that's an easy drive. So... Um, there was no flight or anything like that to account for. So I, uh, so I'm really excited about both of those. But I keep forgetting to mention them. They're at the top of my, of the blog, if you go and look at the show notes. Because I've got tickers going for how many, uh, months, days, weeks are left. So, okay. So, if you are going to either of those things, let me know, because I, I kind of want to know, you know, who else is going, and things like that. So, there, post your red items in the garnet thread. Um, there were some really, there were some cool ones that came. There's been, um, Rosemer did a cowl, um, oh, shoot, somebody did a little red jacket and it's knit it's for a figurine it's about barbie size but it's an actual it's a figurine and they they knit a little jacket um somebody did mitts um sheep dreamery posted um of she is of she has a shop sheep dreamery i think her shop is sheep dreamery and she has a podcast her podcast just became available on itunes recently um it was on YouTube before and I didn't watch it very much because I don't remember to go to YouTube. Um, but now that it's on iTunes, I can put it in Downcast. So uh, I've been watching her. I, I, she started at episode 7. Uh, is in iTunes. So I started watching her recently. Um, she posted. There's been a bunch of stuff going on. There's actually quite a few red things. So post your red things in the garnet thread. Post your snuggles. Um, if you're made a red snuggle, post in both. Uh, next month will be purple in case you're kind of planning ahead. Um, like I'm thinking I might get the malice done in February. So then I'll actually be able to count that as a purple. I was going to say, I'm actually posting my stuff in the birthstone along thread so that you can see them too. Ashley of the Spinner's World podcast has kind of joked that she will post her stuff in the knit-alongs and spin-alongs that they do. Um, which, speaking of, if you spin, you should post and you should 
watch their podcast and post in there. They always have a spin along going along, going on. Um, and Knitting Blooms has spinuary, which is a spinning January thread right now. Anyway, Ashley has said that if she happens to draw her own name, she will draw another name for the prize, but that gives her permission to buy herself a present. And since I've been kind of saying I'm not going to buy a whole lot, although I did order some stuff from Highland Handmaids. Um, I finally custom ordered the Dragonfly colorway because I kept waiting for it to pop back up and she hadn't done it. So I finally asked her if she would please do one. And then because I was ordering that, I looked to see if there's anything else I like. So I actually ordered two braids that are on their way. Um, that's a really long way of saying I'm going to copy Ashley. If I happen to pick myself, I'm going to use that as permission to let myself have a prize. But, like, buy myself something. But I the actual prize, and I'll just redraw for somebody else to get the prize for the month. So, again, Highland Handmaids, or not Highland Handmaids, Plymouth, Happy Feet. This is, it's color four, uh, is the prize for January, and this Lotus, uh, Lotus Yarns Blood Flowers is the prize for February. And then we'll pick more after that. And again, if you want to donate prizes, uh, let me, you know, talk to me and we'll figure out that. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, so, that's all. Yes, because now I'm starting to babble and my voice is starting to go. I'm not coughing, but my voice is raw and this is the most I've talked all day. So, I'll talk to you guys all next week. Bye.